Self-Portrait with a Friend by Raphael, created in 1518, is an evocative painting that captures the profound connection and silent dialogue between two individuals. The gaze of the figure identified as Raphael is calm and steady, holding the viewer in a moment of quiet engagement, while this companion looks outwards, reflecting an inward contemplation. This interplay of gazes creates a narrative of a shared secret or an unspoken understanding, a complicit look that suggests a world of intellectual and emotional connection beyond the visual representation. In the second figure, the eyes do not meet the viewers, which could imply a sense of trust in Raphael to lead the visual conversation. The positioning of the figures, with Raphael's hand gently gesturing, indicates a relationship of equals, engaged in a partnership of the mind. The overall composition, with its subdued palette, and the emphasis on the figures against a dark, undefined background, focuses all attention on the exchange of looks between the two men. This visual conversation becomes the central theme of the painting, a complicit look that conveys volumes about the Renaissance ideal of intellectual kinship. Tradition Women on the Beach by Paul Gauguin, 1891, is a vibrant exploration of silent discourse, set against the tranquil backdrop of Tahiti's shores. The painting features two women in repose, their body's language suggesting a quiet narrative that unfolds in the stillness of the scene. Gauguin's masterful use of colour captures the lushness of the landscape and the depth of the figures, with the contrast between the vivid blues of the sea and the warm tones of the sand and skin creating a harmonious balance. The composition is divided into two distinct but interlocking parts. The introspective woman adorned with a yellow flower, gazing thoughtfully at the ground, and her companion, whose direct gaze challenges the viewer, her posture one of relaxed alertness. Gauguin employs flattened planes of colour and stylized patterns to articulate the forms, imbuing the scene with a sense of calm and timeless grace. These elements come together to evoke a moment of silent understanding and unspoken connection, a theme that resonates deeply in Gauguin's work, capturing the essence of human experience in the simplicity of daily life. Portrait of an Unknown Woman, commonly attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, is a poignant 15th century work. The woman's gaze is direct yet distant, her eyes holding an unfathomable depth that has intrigued viewers for centuries. Leonardo's mastery of sfumato, a technique that softens transitions between colours, graces her visage with a lifelike softness, making her seem both present and untouchable. The subtlety of the portrait is enhanced by the woman's simple yet elegant attire, the textures of her gown and headdress rendered with exquisite detail. The restraint in her expression is balanced by the richness of her clothing, suggesting a narrative of complexity behind her serene exterior. This duality is Leonardo's signature, an embodiment of the Renaissance ideal that marries external beauty with inner depth. The portrait silent in its composition, speaks volumes through the woman's compelling and mysterious gaze, inviting endless contemplation. Les Curieuses by Jeanne Honoré Fragonard presents a scene filled with playful secrecy. The artwork, dating from around 1775 to 1780, shows two people peeking out from behind a veil of soft, flowing fabric. Their faces are touched by light, giving them a glow that draws the viewer into their hidden world. Fragonard's use of light and shade gives life to the curtain, making it seem like it's moving. The expressions on the faces of the figures suggest they are in the middle of a secret, perhaps watching something they shouldn't. They look like they are trying not to be caught, 
which adds a sense of fun to the painting. This artwork by Fragonard is easy to enjoy because it doesn't just show a picture. It tells a story without using words, inviting us to guess the mystery behind the curious gazes. The Fortune Teller by Caravaggio, painted in the 16th century, is a lively depiction of interaction and emotion. The scene captures a young man dressed in a striking outfit with a large feathered hat, as he has his fortune told by a woman whose expression is knowing and slightly amused. Caravaggio is known for his dramatic use of light and shadow, and in this painting, the light focuses on the hands of the fortune teller and the face of the young man, guiding the viewer's attention to the center of the action. The painting tells a story through the gestures and looks of the characters. The woman's eyes meet the young man's with a mix of confidence and cunning, suggesting she knows more than she lets on. The man, on the other hand, seems caught up in the moment, unaware of what the woman's slight smile might mean. Caravaggio's artistry brings the scene to life making viewers feel like they can almost hear the conversation and sense the atmosphere of the encounter. The Cheat with the Ace of Diamonds by Georges de la Tour, created in the 17th century, is a vivid portrayal of deception and cunning. The painting shows a moment of quiet tension as a card game unfolds. The characters are caught in an act of cheating. De La Tour's painting is famous for its dramatic use of light and shadow, which focuses our attention on the expressions and hands of the figures, the central elements of the story. The woman in the middle, dressed in rich golden attire, looks on unknowingly as she is being deceived. On the left, the cheat's face is lit with an expression of covert slyness, while on the right, the young man is absorbed in examining his cards, oblivious to the trick being played. The painting is a study of secret communication, where every glance and gesture has meaning, inviting the viewer to spot the subtle signs of the cheat. It's a classic example of how art can tell a story and capture a moment that is full of intrigue. Madame Has a Guest by Rami Kaur brings to life a scene filled with subtle intrigue and social nuance. In this 20th century painting, a maid is shown caught in a moment of eavesdropping, her face a mixture of surprise and curiosity. This piece cleverly illustrates the class dynamics of its era, highlighting the human tendency to be drawn into the affairs of others. Cobb's painting invites viewers to look beyond the canvas and imagine the narrative themselves. The artist uses the complicit look effectively, connecting the audience with the character's silent communication. The eyes of the figure serve as the focal point, conveying a wealth of emotion and understanding without a word being spoken. Through this visual storytelling, Cobb celebrates the complexity of human interactions and the timeless curiosity that drives us to be part of stories that are not our own. George D. Latour's The Fortune Teller is a captivating example of 17th century Caravaggesque painting, which is characterized by a dramatic use of chiaroscuro and a focus on narrative realism. In this painting, Latour employs a subtle interplay of gazes to weave a narrative of deceit and complicity. Central to the composition is a naive young man, whose rapt attention to the fortune-telling crone stands in stark contrast to the sly activities surrounding him. Latour masterfully directs the viewer's gaze through the alignment of the figures and their gazes. Boy's innocence is underscored by his direct and earnest gaze toward the gypsy, whose eyes are cunningly downcast as she practices her deception. Meanwhile, the accomplices share knowing looks, both among themselves and out towards the audience, 
implicating the viewer in the silent conspiracy. The use of lighting accentuates the theme of complicity. The soft illumination on the faces of the conspirators creates a visual connection between them, while the shadow partially obscures their thieving hands, suggesting the hidden nature of their actions. The youth, bathed in a clear, innocent light, remains oblivious to the darkness of the deceit around him. The detailed period clothing and the textures rendered by Latour add to the theatricality of the scene, as if each character plays a well-defined role in this morality play. Theodore Gerico's Old Italian Woman is a poignant embodiment of melancholy, capturing the essence of reflection and solitude. The subject, an elderly woman from southern Italy, is depicted in a traditional head covering, the stark whiteness of the fabrics setting off her weathered, sun-darkened face. Her gaze is distant, almost as if she's looking through the viewer, lost in her own thoughts or memories. This painting, likely created during Gerico's stay in Rome, reflects the introspective nature of melancholy through the woman's contemplative expression. There's a depth of emotion in her eyes that suggests a lifetime of experiences, and the viewer is drawn into wondering about the thoughts behind her somber stare. It's a powerful image that speaks to the universal experience of aging, solitude, and the inward journey that often accompanies the later years of life. Louis Lona's peasant family in an interior is a thoughtful depiction of rural life, showcasing a family's quiet existence. The painting is filled with soft light that gently illuminates the room, casting subtle shadows and contributing to a mood of contemplation. The family members are shown sharing a simple meal, their expressions and body language suggesting a life of work and unity. The scene is a study in the beauty of everyday life, and the close bonds formed through shared experiences, even in the face of hardship. There's a sense of calm and resilience, with each person absorbed in their role, together yet each lost in thought. Lona captures the essence of melancholy through the dignity and grace of this peasant family, highlighting the depth of emotion found in the quiet moments of daily life. The artwork reflects a moment in time, serene and unassuming, yet rich with the complexity of human experience. Jean Morteau's Piero is a compelling portrayal of the solitary figure amid a group, embodying the classic theme of isolation within society. Piero, traditionally a character from the Commedia dell'arte, is often depicted as the sad clown, and here Watteau captures him in a moment of wistful introspection. The character stands out in his stark white costume, separated from the darker, earthier tones of the background and the figures that seem to fade into it. Piero's gaze is vacant, directed neither at the viewer nor at his companions, suggesting an inward focus. His expression is one of quiet sadness or longing, hinting at a deep-seated melancholy. Watteau's painting invites viewers to reflect on their own moments of feeling alone, even when surrounded by others. It's an intimate look at the character's inner life and a reminder of the universal experience of feeling disconnected or misunderstood in social settings. The painting is a testament to the complexity of human emotions and the poignant beauty found in moments of solitude. Paul Delaroche's Napoleon at Fontainebleau, 31 March 1814, presents a somber reflection on the transient nature of power and the deep sense of loss that can follow its departure. The painting captures Napoleon not in his typical stance of command and conquest, but rather in a state of dejection and introspection, his posture slumped, his expression one of defeat. 
This portrayal contrasts sharply with the typical grandeur associated with Napoleon, focusing instead on his humanity and vulnerability. The empty, shadow-filled room, the discarded crown to the side, and the dimly lit ambience all contribute to the overwhelming sense of isolation and melancholy. Delaroche's painting is a poignant reminder of the solitude that can accompany great power and the weight of reflection that comes with the downfall of an empire. It invites viewers to consider the personal toll of leadership and the inevitable passage of time that respects no person, regardless of their past triumphs. Edgar Doga's painting, In a Café, often referred to as Absinthe, is a profound observation of solitude amid the hustle and bustle of city life. The work features two individuals sitting together, yet seemingly worlds apart, each lost in their own thoughts and drinks. There's a palpable sense of distance between them, despite their physical proximity. Doga's piece is a commentary on the alienation that can be found even in crowded environments, a reflection on how one can feel isolated and disconnected from the surrounding throng. The vacant expressions on the subject's faces and the starkness of the setting amplify the sense of disengagement. The painting invites contemplation on the nature of human interactions in modern society, highlighting how the presence of others does not necessarily equate to companionship or connection. Vincent van Gogh's Portrait of Dr. Gachet is a deeply moving depiction of the man who attended to him during his final days. The painting is rich with emotional intensity, showcasing Dr. Gachet's somber expression that suggests a deep understanding of Van Gogh's struggles. There's a sense of wariness in his eyes, yet also a hint of compassion, reflecting the bond that developed between the artist and his physician. The strong visible brush strokes and the contrast of colors contribute to the painting's poignancy, underscoring the emotional and psychological complexity of the subject. Van Gogh's portrayal goes beyond the mere physical likeness, it delves into the essence of Dr. Gachet's character, touching on the shared human experiences of sadness, empathy, and the heavy burden of knowledge. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.